bodies to our morning Bhagavatam class. And this morning we have, um, where did we lose her? <laughs> uh, Mother Sri Devi, I think we, uh, she was right there. Evidently, uh, she's experiencing Wi-Fi issues in my poor. So she logged onto the phone and we lost her again. So, um, let's see. Yes, Mataji, I don't know. Mm, we have to wait, I think. Um, yeah, I'll... we can just give her, I'm, I'm sure she's going to try back. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's the issue in um, my poor, I heard. It goes back and forth. Let's give it a couple of more minutes. In the meantime, I hope everyone is having a wonderful start on their Karthik and um, hope everyone is um, getting into the pastimes of uh, Mother Yashoda binding Krishna and along with many other wonderful pastimes that happens in this month of Karthik. It's a very, very special month, very, very sweet month actually. Interesting. Uh, uh, Sri, Sri Devi was able to give class with no problem yesterday for our temple online. So this must be a test of patience for all of us. So Hare Krishna devotees, until uh, we hear back uh, from Sh Mother Sri Devi, I will start with the um, reading of the purport and the translation, and hopefully she will join by then. And um, yeah, okay, so. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 9, Verse 11, and the chapter is entitled, Mother Yashoda Binds Krishna. Very, very sweet chapter for the month of Karthik. So I will read the um, translation and we'll go, sorry, I'll read the Sanskrit verse and go into the synonyms and the transcendent purport and translation. Kritagasam tam prarudata makshini kashanta magya mashini svapanina udviksham manam bhava vikvalekshanam haste grihitva bishantyana vagurat. Synonyms. Krita Agasam, who was an offender, tam unto Krishna, prarudantam, without a crying attitude, akshini, his two eyes, kashantam, rubbing, agyan masini, from whose eyes the blackish ointment was distributed all over his face with tears, svapanina, with his own hand, utvik shaman, shamanam, who was seen in that attitude by Mother Yashoda, Bhaya Vivala Ikshanam, whose eyes appeared distressed because of such fear of his mother. Haste, sorry, Hasti, by the hand. Grihitva, catching. Bhishayanti, Mother Yashoda was threatening him. Avagurat, and thus she very mildly chastised him. Shri Prabhupada's translation and purport. When caught by Mother Yashoda, Krishna became more and more afraid and admitted to being an offender. As she looked upon him, she saw that he was crying his tears, mixing with the black ointment around his eyes. And, and, and as he rubbed his eyes with his hands, he smeared the ointment all over his face. Mother Yashoda, catching her beautiful son by the hand, mildly began to chastise him. Sure, Prophet's purport. From these dealings between Mother Yashoda and Krishna, we can understand the exalted position of a pure devotee in loving service to the Lord. Yogis and jnanis, karmis and vedantists cannot even approach Krishna. They must remain very, very far away from him and try to enter um, in his bodily effulgence, although this also they are, not, they are unable to do. Great demigods like Brahma, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, always worship the Lord by meditation and by service. Even the most powerful Yamaraj fears Krishna. Therefore, as we find in the history of Ajamal, Yamaraj instructed his followers not to even, not even to approach the devotees, what to speak of capturing them. In other words, Yamaraj also fears Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Yet this Krishna became so dependent on Mother Yashoda that when she simply showed Krishna the stick in her hand, Krishna admitted to being an offender and began to cry like an ordinary child. Mother Yashoda, of course, did not want to chastise her beloved child very much. And therefore, she immediately threw her stick away and simply rebuked Krishna, saying, Now... I shall bind you so that you cannot commit any offense, any offensive, further offensive activities. Nor for the time being can you play with your playmates. This shows the position of a devotee, pure devotee, in contrast with others like yanis, yogis, and the followers of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies in regarding the transcendental nature of the absolute truth. Om Maganyati Mirandhyasya Gena Gena Shalakaya Chakshurun Unitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Got the translation again. So caught, when caught by Mother Yashoda, Krishna became more and more afraid and admitted to being an offender. As she looked upon him, she saw that he was crying, his tears mixed with the black ointment around his eyes, and as he rubbed his eyes with his hands, he smeared the ointment all over his face. Mother Yashoda, catching her beautiful son by the hand, mildly began to chastise him. So here we see Sri Prabhupada starts off the purport by saying, 
that the dealings between Mother Yashoda and Krishna is not ordinary. And as we know that Mother Yashoda, in her previous three lives or so, um, she did she and Nanda Maharaj did many, many, many austerities to get Krishna as their son. In one pastime, I believe they stood on one leg for, I don't know, thousands of years, many, many austerities to take, to get Krishna as their son. That was their prayer, their greatest desire. So if we think of fallen conditioned souls like ourselves, we cannot even stand on one foot for eh, 30 seconds, probably. I know for me, it's about 10 seconds. I don't know about the rest of you. We cannot even stand on one foot, for more, at least for me, for more than 10 seconds. What to speak of standing on one foot for thousands of years to do austerities so as a prayer and desire to get, the, to get the Lord as our desired son. So here, Krishna, uh, Prabhupada is telling us that the position of Madhya Yasoda, Madhya Yasoda with Krishna, is not any mother like me and you. It's, it's not any woman. That shows how exalted and pure she was. That all she wanted is to have the son have the Supreme Lord as a son so that she can shower him with all the love that she can shower him. Mm. And because of that, even the greatest yogis or the jnanis or the philosophers or the, you know, the spiritualists and what have you, they really cannot enter into that mood of devotional service. Because the only way to attract the Lord is devotional service. We can do, I was always told by few uh, devotees, senior, senior devotees, and proper disciples, and gurus and sannyasis, we can do the best deity worship. We can be the best pundit. We can be the best Sanskrit, uh, you know, reciter. We can know the best lokas. We, have, we may have gotten all the bhakti shastri, bhakti, we, can, we may have gotten all that, but if we really don't understand devotional service, all that we have learned is null and void. It, it, it carries no weight. Because everything that we hear, everything that we are taught, everything that is given to us by the spiritual master and our seniors, is all about Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Father Sevanam. Hearing, chanting, reading, devotional service, Sadhu Sangha, deity of the worship of the Lord, the list goes on. The only way to really understand devotional service is to serve. The only way to know the Lord is to serve. So let's take a very simple example, a very materialistic example. Some of us here may or may not be married, but some of us understand some concept of what it is to be married. We cannot be married to a spouse and not do service. There is no way that we can do that. Okay, so perfect. So let me see. I was just told that Sri Devi Mataji just joined. So Sri Devi, I started the class for you, but please feel free to jump right in and take over. Actually, it would be so wonderful to just keep hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So oh. please carry on. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, we would I didn't want to hold the de the devotees up in La La Land for too long. I had to capture it. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. If we look at, uh, you know, a materialistic example, lack of a better word. Some of us have been married. Some of us were married. Some of us in a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and in order, when we are married to a spouse, we cannot just be married to another person and not do service. Between a boy and a girl, a man mm -hmm. and a woman, when they mm -hmm. want to attract 
a person. They serve. What does the person like? Like, like we go through all the headache, right? If you, you know, what does the person like? What's he, what is his or her favorite food? His or her favorite color? His or her favorite flower color? You know, we, we take the time to want to know what does the other person like? The likes and the dislikes. Why? Because we want to capture the heart of our beloveds, right? Um, even when it comes to our fathers and mothers, you know, I remember my dad till this day, you know, whenever he comes and visits me, I'll make sure that I, I cook his favorites. You know, my dad likes dal, my dad likes dosa, not Italy so much. You know, my dad likes biryani, my dad likes this, you know, and he likes its vegetables cooked a little more than normal. Why? Because we want to serve our parents so that they can enjoy what we cook for them. And when they, and when we see our mother or father or children, our spouses, really enjoying when we serve them, when we do something for them and we give them, it brings so much joy to our hearts. So in that same way, we want to know what does Krishna like? What does he not like? You know, how does he like it? How can we capture the Lord, right? So it's very important that we understand that the only way to capture the Lord is by devotional service. Now, I was also informed, I was also instructed, and I believe it was by Chandramali Swami, if I'm not mistaken, but I've heard it from many other gurus and senior devotees too. When we want to capture the Lord, it should not be a show. See Krishna, I'm in front of you and I'm doing all the service. Wow, just see. Krishna, do you see me? Am I visible to you? Look at me. I'm doing all this. That doesn't attract the Lord. What attracts the Lord is that our service is so beautiful that he will come to us. Where's this devotee? You know, I was reading a very nice article a um, few months ago. And it was about uh, cleanliness, you know. And cleanliness and devotional service. And I was reading this beautiful article where whenever we uh, go to the temple and say the floor is so nicely swept and so clean that sometimes we can see the shine in the, in the floor. And the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, wow, this floor is so clean. Which devotee cleaned this floor? I have to meet this devotee and be his friend and learn how to clean this floor like this because I'm sure the Lord is very pleased with him. So that should be our consciousness. How can I improve my devotional service? How can I improve my service attitude? How can I improve my desire to wanting to serve the Lord? How can I improve to become a better servant of the devotees of the Lord? Because as we know, if we serve, if we serve the Lord's devotees, the Lord is very, very, very pleased. The Lord is very, very, very pleased. But if we just serve the Lord and do not serve the devotees, what's the use? The Lord says no. You want to come to me, you go through my devotees. You want to hear about me, you go through my books. I am present in the holy books. You want to chant my names, you go through my devotees. They will tell you how to chant my names. So everything that we do, if we want to come to the Lord, we have to go through his devotees. I heard a very nice lecture by Sri Prabhupada a few months ago, where Sri Prabhupada said, Krishna is not cheap, but he's available to those who want to sincerely know him. Yesterday, we, went, we started our Bhagavad Gita reading. Um, and it's on Monday, Wednesday, Friday evenings. And we started back on the Bhagavad Gita, verse chapter 1, verse 1. But this time, we are hearing from Sri Prabhupada's lectures. 
And Shafrapa made a very nice point that really stuck with me last night. He said, Krishna conscious, this Krishna conscious movement is not for those who are envious. Very powerful statement. This Krishna conscious movement is not for those who are envious. He says, it's, and those who come to Krishna consciousness, we will teach you how not to become envious. Because Krishna, we cannot attract Krishna by jealousy. Because everything is owned by the Lord. Everything is owned by the Lord. So here, this beautiful movement of Krishna consciousness is teaching us how to be das, das, anudas. Completely surrendered soul where we go through the nine processes of devotional service to get, hopefully, to get to the stage of Atmani Vedana. Complete surrender. So devotional service is the only way to really know and be binded by the Lord. Even in the purport, Sri Prabhupada says that the great demigods worship the Lord by meditation and service. What to speak of us? I remember a, a lecture where I heard many, many, many years ago where uh, we were told that even the demigods, now this is so interesting, even the demigods want to come down in this age of Kali Yuga and to take birth as children of devotee families. Why? Because they want to be part of the Krishna conscious movement and to engage in devotional service because they said, you know what? These devotees in Eskon, these devotees in, in Kali Yuga are so fortunate that they are able to chant the holy name. They can do service directly for the Lord and his devotees. I want to be part of that movement. So I'm going to take birth. Can you imagine that? So sometimes, you know, we take things very casually, like yesterday morning's class, Sri Devi was mentioning in our morning Bhagavatam class. When we take something casually, it becomes a casualty. So it's very important that we do not take the Krishna conscious movement very casually. Then it becomes a casualty. How? Because familiarity breeds contempt. Oh, yeah, I grew up with it. Yeah, I saw it in my mother's house. Yeah, 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 I've been there. I know. We take it for granted. We really don't relish the sweetness of the Krishna conscious movement because there are devotees, there are demigods who are waiting to take birth, who are waiting to come into this age of Kali to be part of the Sankirtan movement, to be part of Sri Prabhupada's mission, to engage in devotional service. They're waiting. My spiritual master, his holiness, Bhakti Tirtha Swami mentioned many years, and he used the word, they're waiting in line. <laughs> Just to come down and be part of this beautiful movement. So we should take every um, opportunity to really find some sort of devotional service that will keep our minds, our heart, minds, and soul occupied some shape some form some manner something or the other because maya is very very strong she will find a little bit of opening and she'll crack herself in it she'll crack herself she says okay i got you man you're under my control so you hope you always have to find some way to engage our minds and our senses in devotional service. See, even Sri Prabhupada is mentioning here, even in the history and in, in the story of Ajamil, you know, when the Vishnu Dutas and the, and the Yamadutas came to take, sorry, when the Yamadutas came to take uh, Ajamil, what did Yamarat say? No, no, no. He was chanting the Lord's name, Narayan, Narayan, who was none other than his son. Right? And then Yamarat says, no, no, no. 
that is a devotee of the Lord. We cannot take him. And the Vishnu Dutas came and said, no, he is my devotee. You cannot touch him. So in other words, Sri Prabhupada is teaching us, even Yamaraj fears Krishna and the Lord's devotees. That's the reason why. That's one of the reasons, you know, why we wear what we call the dog collar, this neck beads, you know. The neck bead is a sign of that we are devotees of Lord Krishna. But it's also to tell Yamaraj, hey, this is my dog collar. You know, like whenever we see dogs walking down the streets with their master, right? The master is holding on to the dog with a collar. This is our collar. It is by this collar that we will be dragged back. So it's so important that we always make sure that we have Tulsi neck beat on our necks. Because this is our um, license. This is our dog collar that when we get lost, this is our license that's going to help you know, that's going to help find us. Oh, this is a devotee of the Lord. Let's take him back to Godhead. This is our identity, our license, and we belong to the Lord. This is a sign that the Tulsi Negbi is to show at, it to remind us more than others, but to remind us that this body of mine belongs to the Lord. This dog collar. This Tulsi neck bead is a sign that, that, that is telling me, I don't own me. I don't own I. I don't own mine. I am owned by the Lord because I have this Tulsi neck bead around me. So this heart, body, mind, and soul, everything is the Lord. Use me as an instrument. And it's a very nice prayer that as devotees, we can somehow, you know, we can pray to the Lord. I am yours. Use me as an instrument in your service. Use me as an instrument. And then when we say that prayer, the Lord will give us service. And when we are engaged in service, that attracts the Lord so much. The Lord is only attracted by devotional service. Nothing else. Here, even Krishna, Asha Prabhupada says, even Krishna became so dependent on Mother Yashoda that even when she showed the stick, he was afraid. Why? Devotional service. He allowed himself to be bitten by you know by his mother who loves him in devotional service she allowed him sorry he he allowed her to capture him he allowed her to show the stick and make him scared the child of the child krishna allowed mother yashoda to make him scared so much so that he cried why did he cry? Because Mother Yashoda, as we mentioned earlier, she did so many thousands of years of penance to obtain the Lord as her child that she wants to give Krishna all the love that she can give as a mother. So Krishna is reciprocating with her. And she is serving the Supreme Lord in devotional service. And in turn, the Lord is reciprocating with her, crying like an ordinary child. Imagine this. And then Sri Prabhupada continues to say that, of course, Mother Yashoda, she did not want to chastise her beloved child. So she merely showed the stick. And she told Krishna, okay, I am going to tie you up so that you will not commit any offenses. And so now you're not going to play with your friends. Right? And the Lord reciprocated. Why did the Lord reciprocate? Because Mother Yashoda was reciprocating with him in devotional service. 
So this shows that if we perform devotional service, the Lord will reciprocate with us in love. That's the only way to catch the Lord, right? Imagine with our own children. If we were to just uh, chastise, chastise, scold, yell at our children without love, what happens between the mother and the child? It becomes a very uh, dicta a dictatorship, authoritarian relationship. But when we chastise our child with love, they will come to us. I remember with my children, when my children were young, you know, you know, like any other kids, right? They were very small. Had to do a lot of correction. So, and as my children were growing, because now they're not children, they're women now. But as my girls were growing up into their, you know, late 9, 10, 11, early teenage years, you know, once a while, they'll tell me, oh, mama, you know, mama, you're so good. Mama, you're so this. You're the best mom. And I to always tell my kids, was I really a good mommy to you? Because I used to chastise you. I remember my first daughter telling me, mommy, you had to chastise me because I didn't listen to you. But I still love you very much. And my second daughter, who was a little more difficult one to raise because she was a second child. I think I corrected her more than my first one. And even with her, you know, I had to do a lot of correcting, but a lot of love. But I used to always feel bad that I had to correct my kids so much, you know, chastise them, punish them. I used to always feel bad. So as they were growing up, even my second daughter would tell me, Amma, you know, you are the, you know, Mama, thank you, Mama. All kinds of stuff they would tell me. And, and then I would always ask them, are you sure? But I used to do this to you. I used to punish you. I used to put you in time out. I used to shout at you. Because, mommy, we were not listening to you. But I could see the love in it. That is how children are. When we chastise with love. And love with chastise. Children have to see both. If we only chastise, chastise, chastise without love, then they'll always say, mommy's always correcting me. Mommy's always chastising me. But if we chastise and punish and rebuke, and after that, we sit down and we say, you know why I chastised you? You know why I punished you? And Mother Shoda did that to Krishna. Like she said, now I'm going to bind you so that you won't commit any wrong activities and you have no time to play for your friends. So now, until then, I'm going to tie you. Mother Shura, she chastised, she punished, and then she explained with love why she did it. This is the simple 100 level of parenting right here. Right? We correct, we chastise, and after that, we tell them, why did I chastise you? I think it's very, very important that we take the time after correcting or punishing or chastising or whatever to the child. And after that, we sit down and we tell the child, this is why I punished you. I remember a pastime with mother, I mean, sorry, with uh, Shri Prabhupada's father, Gaur Mohande. <laughs> Gaur Mohande, when uh, Shri Prabhupada was very naughty when he was small, Gaur Mohande, told your prophet my son i'm so sorry that i had to punish you but because you were doing naughty so i had to punish you but this is why i punished you but i still love you and then gormon they told your prophet even mother sachi punished lord chaitanya and so did mother ishoda punish krishna so i'm punishing you because krishna has given me uh, given me to you to raise you so I'm punishing you to correct you so that you can become a better person, but I still love you. This is, we have gotten so many examples of taking the time to explain to the child why we punish them. And so that they can see the love in our punishment. When children see love and care and sincerity in the parents' punishment or chastisement somehow 
they will learn, they will realize, and they become very close to the parent. That is devotional service. That is devotional service. One, the, one can be captured by the Lord only by devotional service. So this is what came to me uh, on the spot. I, I hope I was able to uh, put uh, justice to this verse on behalf of Mother Sri Devi. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to serve all of you. This was completely not planned, completely impromptu. But I would like to request devotees if there are any questions, any reflections, any comments. Uh, and I would like to hear a takeaway. Uh, please do uh, unmute yourself and share. Would love to hear from all of you. And Sri Devi, thank you so much for allowing me to serve all of you because I completely don't know what I spoke today. Go ahead, Mother Sri Devi. I couldn't be more delighted. I'm so thankful, Krishna Ray, that we could all hear you. <laughs> it was wonderful, wonderful. It was wonderful. completely an unprepared class. You know that. <laughs> You don't need to prepare. You've been around so long. You don't need to prepare, my dear Anasuya. It was wonderful. Thank and you. let me tell you what was my takeaway. It's Please. When you about a mother and your children. And I was remembering how children just don't like it when we correct them and we instruct them and we guide them and we chastise them. But years later, you know, they're grateful for what we did. And they're thankful to us. But while they're going through it, oh, I hate this. I don't like this. I don't like what you do. But it's out of love that the mother does that. Yes. And so you were pointing that out that Mother Yashoda's love is, of course, pure love, completely pure. She doesn't care who is Krishna. For her, he's a naughty little boy. He has to be tied up because he will become more mischievous and get into trouble and so on. So it is really beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's so true. It, it's funny that you mentioned it because when I was, uh, you know, uh, now when I look back how my parents uh, punished me, sometimes I used to tell my husband, you know, now when I look back, thank God they did that because I would have been a mess if they didn't do that. <laughs> because my father was very strict. I, I think he was too strict, like any Indian father, too strict over women, but girls. But I've learned some goods and bads, I have to say, from my, from my parents parenting me. So when I had to parent my kids, I made sure that I didn't go in the other zone. But when I look back, I said, that's the reason why that when I look back, I said, yes, now I see why daddy did that. Now I see why mommy did that. Yes, it was very intense at the time, but I appreciate that at least I was corrected in that. So it helps me to look back and appreciate that parenting is not easy it is a lot of work and I've noticed and I've learned that in today's time um, you know um, in the old days uh, parents kind of knew you know because of the old school mentality they kind of knew how to parent their children but now I see in today's time parents have a very difficult time parenting their kids because they are so caught up in this web of material life that they are somehow losing the touch of being in tune with their child and knowing how to parent. So, and I've seen today's young parents that sometimes like they themselves need the parenting skills to know how to parent their children. <laughs> like I've, because they are so caught up in today's material web. Oh my God. As soon as the child goes, Wee! here's a cell phone, go play with it. And I'm saying that is the worst thing you want to do is to give your child a cell phone. But yeah, and, and, and I think it's because the material world is so crazy that today's parents don't quite have the, what's the word? Uh, the uh, Don't quite know how to develop the understanding of patience how to switch the gears of hats, you know, how to just be still and just, you know, tell the child, okay, mommy is talking, give me 30 seconds. You know, like, like, like that 
connection. I, I feel that that connection, that intuition, that intunement is weaker as Kali Yuga is progressing. I've seen that with kids and children, with parents and children. In, in my temple, did they call me the, the, child, the child police patrol? <laughs> so sad. Because, um, yeah, because sometimes the parents don't quite know. But when, but you know, because I, I think it's the, it's the Kali Yuga process. I don't know what it is, but I've seen that challenge. Yes, yes Mother Scarlet, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare it's Krishna. And all glories to Sher Prabhupada. All Jai. To Maharaj Chandra Mule. Uh, uh, I, I am a mother of six children, three wow. boys. Wow. Mother, I salute you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, uh, I did, maybe I put come around. Yes. Um, I, I did, uh, I was very strict uh, for, for instance, how long they should be out and with who they have to uh, have um, uh, relationship with, which friend was good and not bad and anyway. So I try to be strict uh, to, to see that they don't choose uh, wild child if I may, uh, or the uh, much, uh, uh, you know, children who were st staying outside very late and so on and so on. In all of this, my six children, there was one who, <laughs> who had very much difficulty with that and didn't it's always like one child mother. It's always one child that is <laughs> exactly didn't like it. Still, I have not get anything from him nothing that if he I have tell all my children I'm so sorry if I was strict I did it because I thought that the best, best time best best thing for you I didn't want uh, something happen to you I was worried about you and so on and so on and so on please forgive me if you're I did the way the best way I could this I told them when they were wow. older all of them except one he has not said a word to me, nothing about it. Mm -hmm. We have good relationship. We oh, okay. talk together. So there is no problem. But but uh, I see I see in him that he's he's still not happy because I try to control how long he had to be outside. Because you know, boys they do dangerous things when it's <laughs> When it's after clock, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock in the night, they do dangerous things. Mm -hmm. I saw them, they did dangerous things. So I didn't want them to do. So that's why I told them, when it's a weekday, you're not allowed to be outside more than nine o'clock in the night. And when mm -hmm. it's weekend, only 10. Mm -hmm. But as I said, and that's what I'm, why I'm saying that is, it's good that uh, some children accept that uh, it's okay, mommy, I don't, I understand, I'm not angry, I'm not uh, sad about it, but how to do so that even one doesn't get the way he is, the way my son is. He doesn't say anything, he doesn't say anything about it, and when he doesn't say anything about it, then it means that he still didn't like it or don't like it still you know mother what is coming to my mind and i will after that i'll pass it on to mother sri devi is what is coming to my mind is um they may not say anything right now but somewhere down the road he will say something something will krishna will create a situation where he will encounter something experience something and then what you taught him will come to his mind as second nature and then he's gonna say wait mom did that to me yes now i see mom's why mom was this way it may not hit him right now because he hasn't experienced it but there will be a situation that's going to come up and then he's going to say but now i know why mommy did that now it's going to make sense that's what's coming to my mind but sri devi do you did you want to shed some light on that prabhu
Well, I would just say in general, you know, in general, just like you, I had very, very, very strict parents. And to me, I thought that's the way everyone is. But then when I went to medical college and I found so many of my peers doing so many things and I thought, oh, how is it that they can do this? How is it they can do that? And then I realized that, yes, my parents were a little too strict. But I think that is much better than being too lenient. Because with leniency, then the child doesn't get any sense of boundaries and just goes haywire. When the parents are very strict, in general, children are a little more fearful and they may also have low self-esteem because of that fear complex rather than having their feelings heard and understood, having empathy. Those things are absent in a very strict home. The child's feelings don't matter. Do what I say. That's the rule. And fear more than love motivates the child. So children have an external locus of control rather than an internal locus of control. So that's not very good for the emotional health and self-esteem in the long run. There's work to be done in that area. So I would say that authoritative style of parenting rather than authoritarian style of parenting gives the best results when it comes to developing a child because you are being respectful of the child's feelings but at the same time, you're being strict about what they can and cannot do, which sounds like something like what Scarlett Mataji is uh, talking about her. So uh, there are different styles of parenting. And as Briasta Vision team members, we highly recommend that you respect because the child is ultimately a spirit soul and a child of God. He, has, he or she has just come into your household now in this lifetime, but he eternally belongs to Krishna. So we must have respect even for that soul in a child's body and not treat them like, hey, you're my kid, do what I say, come on. You know, that kind of authoritarian style of parenting is not so respectful of the child. So we, we, we recommend a blend. That means you're respectful of the child's feelings, but ultimately you have the say when it comes to what's good and what's not good. But you do take the child's input. What do you think? Do you think this is okay? And you give them choices. You can wear your pink jacket or your blue jacket, but you have to wear a jacket. There's no question of not wearing a jacket. So you make it, you give the child some amount of freedom, some choices, not that you are the, you know, drill sergeant in the household, <laughs> which is the style of parenting I had. I was in great fear of my parents. Me it too. Took me a very long time to stop being fearful of authority figures, even into my adult life. I would live in fear of everybody. You know, I was terrified of teachers, terrified of the principal, terrified of any authority figure. Uh, a lot of my self-confidence had to come by sheer hard work on my own self. It was very difficult actually. So there are some downsides to very strict parenting too. Uh, Go ahead, mother, please. I'm sorry, when, when I said that I tried to control it, I did it by talking to them and say, mm -hmm. I trust you, but I don't trust your friends. Mm -hmm. These people I don't trust. I don't trust nothing will happen outside. That's why I want just to protect you. So I, I never lay a hand on them, never. I never fight with them or anything. I try to explain for them but somehow their friend has more power than what I could uh, try to make them to understand. Their friend could say, oh, you're, you're afraid. Oh, you're not, you know what I mean? Make them to, uh, to be more wild than to understand that I'm just trying to trust, to, to uh, protect them. So it, for me, it has been, uh, I have struggled very much. I was worried when they were outside because it happened many bad things. I saw that. I saw many of their friends now doing drugs or they are in, uh, in jail. Because in Europe, it's very, very free. You can do whatever you want. You don't need to be with your parents after you're uh, feeling 16 years old. You can just leave them. 
So the, it was not that I want to have control over their life. Absolutely not. I didn't like it myself. I don't like it. But I just tried to protect them so that they didn't get harmed or use uh, drugs or use alcohol, which it happened all the time between the young people, all the time, still happening. So, I mean, Yes, it's good. That's what I, what I meant, that chastising. I didn't chastise them. I tried to talk to them and say, I trust you, and so on and so on. Still doesn't help. Still, one girl and one boy, still they are not very happy. So, I mean, it's, it's for me, it's 50-50. Chastise, not chastise. 50-50, I, I, have, I have difficulty with it because I saw it myself, how, what it happened. So I don't know how to see it. I'm 50-50 about it. You want to come on on that tree, Devi? Before you leave? Well, uh, you know, ultimately we all just do the best we can. Everything yep. is not in our control. Very little is in our control. We just do the best we can with what we have been given. And we ourselves are influenced by our style of parenting, yes. how we were parented. Now, I knew that the way I was parented was very detrimental for my self-esteem, for my confidence. So I always try to make sure my child had choices. I try to be respectful of her feelings and things like that. So maybe I went a little bit overboard when it came to that. Maybe I could have been a little stricter, but I was a combination of both. So sometimes now I think, oh my God, did I do right? Good? I think as parents, we all have these issues, you know, did we do the right thing? Did we do the right? Ultimately, they have to grow up and they're going to be influenced by so many other people in their lives. We are not the only people. They have teachers, they have friends, they have colleagues, they have bosses, they have neighbors, they have co-workers. I mean, they're going to be hurt. And most important, those children who are born in our movement, they have Krishna consciousness and they have the wonderful spiritual masters. So we can safely conclude that as long as we expose them to saintly and holy people, Krishna will make sure that, you know, they get all that they need to, to grow up and, and become, you know, uh, nice individuals. At least that's my hope. <laughs> that's all that's I can say. That, that's a good point, Shadevi. And as, as you're speaking, what, what helps me a lot is prayer. Mm. Because even when Krishna would go out with his cowherd boys to go uh, herd the cows, Mother, you should have prayed. <laughs> Bring my son home safely, you know? So that, Mother, you should have showing us the power of prayer. So I even, like you were saying, even with my kids, you know, like, and, and, and uh, how would children have their own karma? Just because we are the mother and the father does not mean that the children carry our karma. Just because we just because we care them for nine months, that means, oh, no, my karma is your karma. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes that kind of, you know, somehow we feel, okay, you are my child. So you have to understand what, how I do, you know, it's my karma, it's your karma. No, they have their own karma and they have to burn the karma in this lifetime. We guide them, we protect them, we teach them, we, you know, control them, we punish them, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, they have to go through their karma. There is, I mean, I can literally see with, with both my daughters, you know, I did the best I could. Even last night, my, you know, one small thing about my second daughter and my husband was saying, you know, but if she doesn't learn it now, she's, she's 21, by the way, she doesn't learn it now, she's going to face problems when she gets married. I said, so be it. <laughs> You know, whatever. I did my job. Let her go deal with it. How much can we keep control? Because the more we do that, then we are becoming controllers. And we are not meant to be the controllers. So the best that we can do, what I have learned is pray, pray, pray. Just as Mother Yashoda prayed whenever Krishna goes out to the fields with the 9,000, 9 million cows or whatever, with, you know, with his covered voice. She prayed. Bring my son home safely. She prayed. And we just pray and let the Lord handle everything. And 
you know, and um, know that our prayer will protect our kids. Your Krishna will protect our kids. But it, at the end of the day, they have their own karma. They have to go through it. There's, that's one thing that was very difficult for me to really grasp. But at the end of the day, I said, okay, I've taught my kids enough sense <laughs> to know that don't do this. The rest of it, you fly your own plane. I'm done. I'm tired, you know? So that's what it is. Yeah. And my, I, my children, they are also old. My, my, there you youngest go. <laughs> is 20, my youngest is 25. There you go. So <laughs> they'll be fine, mother. They'll be fine. Believe me. And, and, and kids will only, at that age, they will learn by growing their own plane. And they will learn. And then they'll come back home. And kids always come home when they, you know, at that age, like, okay, I can just run to, to mommy's house because mommy's there. That's just how it happens, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I still do it. Daddy, are you, are you there? I'm like 50. Yes, I'm there. What do you want? <laughs> you know, we still do that. So, yeah. I think Revati or uh, Namrata had a question. I saw their hand up. I'm sorry if I did not answer you, but prayer is, is a big thing that I've learned with, with raising kids also. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I think I got the clarification. From, Good. Uh, things, but thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, please accept my humble obeisance. Accept my jai, jai. Thank you so much, Mataji, for this spontaneous and uh, very powerful class. It really touched my heart, uh, as, uh, especially like you said, like devotional service is like always thinking how to serve. And you gave your father example, like, you know, how when we meet, like, you know, father comes, we always think like, you know, what he likes and all that. So always in that mode. So just a clarification, Mataji. So devotional service, like um, um, uh, Guru Maharaj was also saying, it doesn't mean that you go somewhere to temple and do uh, like a service. It also like reading and everything. So uh, just my understanding also, as you gave an example, like um, serving a father. So aligning, so devotional service is like aligning your activities um, according to the instruction of spiritual master, I mean, everything what you do when it comes to serve your kids, your husband, and every activity that you do, that's also a devotional service. I Absolutely. Mean, it's not because like going we, out and... Uh, right. Because see, like even when we get... Uh, I remember when when we first got married, my, my, me and my husband, we were told by my spiritual master... If your mate is not spiritual, you don't have a maid. Because you need to have, both have to go in sync. Because the mate is given to us as a gift from Krishna. So like when we're given a diamond or a gift or something, we take really good care of it. You, you just don't say, okay, I got this diamond, put it aside. No. But when we're given a gift, whether it be in the form of a husband or wife, whether it be in the form of a child, we have to take care of it very nicely. So that's devotional service. Now, like, like I was mentioning about my, my father. Yes, you know, when, when my father come, it's devotional service. Why? Because I'm seeing the spirit soul in him, mm -hmm. right? And, and, you know, interestingly, not many devotees know that. I think Sri Devi knows it, that my, uh, I was born and raised Christian. So I come from a Christian background. So my father till today is, you know, my father is actually an ordained Christian minister. <laughs> so, you know, it took him a long time to accept me as a devotee, to be very frank with you. So, but even though I know that he is not so happy that I'm a devotee, but he accepts, he tolerates. But when he comes, mm -hmm. I'm cooking his favorite. But what am I giving him? Prasadam. That service. Mm -hmm. All his favorites, Right. He likes dosa, he likes dal, he likes this, he likes, you know, whatever. He likes whatever. So what I give him is prasadam. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You know, ironing his clothes. Because, because I remember and, and, and another point that we that was taught by my spiritual master many years ago. He says, we should be thankful to our parents because if it was not for them, whether they are not devotees or not whether they don't like us being devotees it doesn't matter but it's because of them that we got a body to use this body in krishna service whether they agree with us or not whether they don't like us to be devotees or not whether they are against us it doesn't matter but the fact is they gave birth if we think about proper disciples right none of the proper disciples parents are devotees <laughs> 
but look chandramani swami is a sanyasi indra dev swami is a saint the list goes on mm. we have so many sanyasis and gurus whose parents are not devotees mm. but they had to use that avenue to take birth to carry on prophet's mission so in that sense is very important that even that is also devotional service i hope i answered and clarified your yes, point yes. devadish yeah so basically aligning all your mood and activities you know according to spiritual master's instructions and what lord krishna wants us to do and yeah. so um, everything yeah. and also gratitude which is said you know gratitude when we are like a non devotees we should have that gratitude um, yes wonderful yeah thank you because sometimes like you know i find it like very hard like okay kids have uh, i mean i have like a grown up kids i mean high school and middle school if i have to go and do devotional service and stay four hours outside leaving them i mean i go and do i feel happy but still i feel like it's a sense gratification to me because you know still kids are there i need to take care so i cannot judge like you know situations like that so yes know. i completely get that i went through that life too uh, what what has helped me in both my children is this is when kids and this have seen in many many uh youth when we meet the kids needs before we are able to get to our service and the kids see you know what mommy has met my need and mommy has service to do they feel wow mommy took care of me now mm-hmm. mommy is going to do service and when children see that i've seen in both my kids they eventually have a very natural attraction for devotional service it just happens oh very nice it it just happens and what i've learned is that i always tell my when they were growing up you know i always tell my girls okay you know what i have this devotional service i have this dt service so i'm going to do all this first and then i'm going to go to the temple so all this is over here so you know what to do so when i come back that so i always communicate to them so that they know okay mom is not just disappearing out of the picture and where's mommy so it's very important that they get that we communicate with them that okay mommy has devotional service because we don't want the children to feel like mom has ignored me for devotional service mm-hmm. it's very important that we communicate to them that we are able to meet their needs and i could communicate with them okay this 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 is happening i've done this i'll come back i'll do this i'm going to be out for this many time so so that the kids okay fine mommy sits this mom's going to go for 3 4 hours mom's going to come back she's going to give us attention mm-hmm. you know so that the children have something to look forward to so they won't feel the mom is gone kind of a thing you know so it's very important that we communicate but it's also very important for children it's even nice if the children can come with you mm-hmm. to the temple and do their homework in the temple while you're doing service mm-hmm. that way they see oh mom is doing service wow so wonderful see how mom is smiling and doing it she loves doing service i should learn from mom and the more they see that because we set the example Mm. children learn from the parents so when they see the parents you know juggling between material and spiritual and doing and love doing self they're like oh wow yeah this is fun and they naturally have the desire for devotional service mm. yes. yeah yeah they really do that's what i have seen in my experience. i i i hope that helped revati yes mother ji yeah very nice yeah very practical yeah thank you i like thank that you. thank yeah, you yeah the main thing with kids is communication communication talk them talk 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 until you burn the ears out <laughs> not at that point but you know because they just want to be communicated children they want to be communicated they want their needs met and they want to be heard mm-hmm. and if we do all three and somehow manage our services they'll they'll feel good oh, very yeah. nice yeah 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 so much yeah very wonderful class yeah i like that also chastisement with love i always surprise yes. my younger one so sometimes you just take it like a routine like a granted okay mommy does yeah. all this, this but you right. say love and also with love tell them why you're chastising yeah. them yeah see mm-hmm. because if you see you know we have examples from mother yashoda she did that you know mm-hmm. she 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 showed the stick and she says why you know when gor mohan dev prabhu when he was going to chastise his son he chastised your property says why i chastised you 
And then he said, because even the, even my mother Sachi just has Lord Chaitanya. So I have to chastise you because Krishna gave me to you. Like we have to speak to the children and tell them why I'm correcting you, why I chastise you. I know like when my kids were younger, my daughters were younger, you know, I, I, I don't think as a common thing now, but when they were young, we used to do, do timeouts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they do it nowadays. I have no idea. And I would tell them, you know, go timeout. Think of what you have done what is good and what is not good, I'll come back and talk to you. And I will literally go back and sit with them and say, okay, what did you do? Why was it wrong? Why was it not wrong? Why did mommy chastise you? And why did I chastise you? And then at the end, I apologize. It's very important for parents to, because even Gaur Mohande, mm -hmm. that's a very nice sharing by Sri Prabhupada. That Gaur Mohande even apologized to Prabhupada at the time of Charan. I'm sorry that I chastised you, but I had to punish you because you did. Tada, 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 but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Because when parents do not apologize to their children, the children will never learn how to say I'm sorry for what they have done wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that after we put them in timeout or punishment or whatever you want to call it, go and sit down with them, have a discussion point out the wrong and the right and say, I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, mommy and daddy do say sorry, huh? That's cool. You know, that's how they learn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's very important. Communication and chastisement with love. Yeah. Beautiful. Very yeah. important. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Namrata. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Oh, dear Guru Dev, devotees. Um, yeah, it was in fact indeed a powerful class. I think a lot of gemstones to be oh, collected. In it was completely and unprepared on the spot <laughs> in front of you, class. Yeah, but sometimes it happens like even always it happens in fact that unprepared things <laughs> come out as a masterpiece. As, yeah, so I think spontaneous things, in fact, come as a masterpiece. <laughs> so this is one of it, I think. Thank you. you. Uh, I have also listened to your class for the first time, but yes, I think uh, I would love to look. I'm, I'm, in fact, I look forward to more. Oh, Hare Krishna. Thank uh, you. Because there are a lot of tips. Um, and the parenting, you gave a lot, lot of things. Uh, as far as my son, uh, I just have one son. So uh, as far as my son is concerned, he definitely is a, a, more than me being, uh, me expressing a gratitude towards uh, my son. He himself is, uh, you know, born with very good nature. Wow. I think nice. I had to do a very little work, I think. Nice. <laughs> um, because uh, right from his childhood, I see that uh, whenever, if I am chastising him, uh, if I am angry for something, trying to uh, make him uh, learn the discipline, with a little hard words, he is like, okay, mo uh, mom gave me hard words, but he comes back, he makes sure yes. mom is <laughs> back to the lovable words what she uh, gave me. So because he, he could see the love in you. He could see that that means even when you're chastising, he can see the love in it. Yeah. When That's he was younger, more younger, he was like directly, uh, no, you are chastising me, but he he, he runs into my lap. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> How old is he, he now? He's, a seven, he's going to turn eight in the January. Nice. Eight. 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 Okay. Oh, that's so cute. See, he can see the love. He can really see the love. And for his age, he's, yes, he's definitely very inquisitive. And uh, his, in, I think his inquisitiveness is growing because I made one thing for sure from right from, or right from the very beginning. That is, whatever question he asks, uh, gradually it, uh, like, Previously, it was material more, but then gra uh, gradually, like from material, he uh, changed his track towards, directed his track towards spiritual questions more. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. So I'm sure one thing that I never tell him no for any answer. Good. So, uh, or never say, okay, if there is lack of time, I would say, okay, can you give me some minutes? I'll, I'll, I'll answer you this question after some time. That is the right way to do it. Absolutely. Rather than shoving them away. Absolutely. Yeah. So I never told him no for that answer. And uh, after coming to Christian consciousness, I made sure that uh, whatever he's questioning me, I uh, use references to uh, answer him. Mm -hmm. So this developed one thing in him that he was very sure that what mommy is telling is, is absolute thing. So he, it's coming from the scriptures. Wow. He had that trust. So uh, that maybe that is gradually happening, but that is the nice. strength, I think. Very nice. And I think also, if I'm not mistaken, is he is watching you listening to class. He's watching yes. you hearing. He's watching you. And because he's watching you and you do things around him, he's naturally going to get that. He's, he's, he's naturally going to develop that nature of inquisitiveness on spiritual topics because he's watching his mommy do that. Yes, yes, he's very, he, he knows all of you. <laughs> Hurry, ball. <laughs> See? See, that's the thing, because that's how kids learn. That's why I think it's so important that kids be around when we do things rather than shooing them away and saying, okay, you're in the way, go sit down. But the more they're involved in it, the more they will develop that, like you said, yeah. the, the inquisitiveness. And I think the word is also that they have that natural uh, curiosity for Krishna consciousness. Very good one. Very good point. Amazing. Amazing. He, in fact, he, uh, Bhuta Bhavana Prabhu, he comes very rarely, but he knows him also. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Because he's watching you. He's, he's part of your world. And he's in yeah. your world. So because he's in your world, he's seeing it. And naturally, it's just going, because he, a kids at that age, what we call, they, their minds are very like spongy. They soak in everything. And then they watch. And then they just learn. And then they just, oh, this is the kind of things mommy asks. Okay. Okay. And then they just develop that attitude. You know, that's really nice. That's really nice. Yes. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm seeing this uh, positive progress in him. So right. yes, I'm definitely satisfied. Keep uh, it up. He He's in fact, even uh, he, he tells me, I don't know, th for this, for his age, uh, this is uh, like a little more than what he's telling me. But he's like, okay, you have a group in future. I will also have it. So, <laughs> yep. so he's, uh, he is curious for that also. Yep. So I said, yes, you'll definitely have. And yes. you have to choose that thing. And your guru will choose you and you will choose your group. So yes. he, I, I make it little, you know, uh, uh, more sometimes mysterious or sometimes, you know, uh, like he has to find out something. So that <laughs> makes him more curious. <laughs> for the Very nice. Thing. Very nice. Because that's how they learn. That is how they connect the understanding of the parampara. Very nice. You're so, doing a very nice service, Namrata. Very, very nice. Uh, I I just need the prayers and uh, blessings of Vaishnavas that I may continue to be, uh, you know, a Krishna conscious parent for my child. You are doing such wonderful service, and it's so nice that your you that your son is watching you, always in your world, always part of your world, and really seeing now. Oh, this is how mommy does, and naturally they will develop that inquisitiveness, the curiosity. You know, and, and, and because kids are very observant. So when they observe that, they will develop it. And then it becomes part of their lives. Like, like, like it's not like a double life. It's the only life they know, you know, like that. So that was a very good point. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Amazing. Thank, and, and yes, uh, in fact, my, the other people in my family, I don't think I am the instrument to uh, you know, uh, change their mindsets or something, but with uh, 
seeing me my son is developing and seeing wow. seeing him that is affecting my family a little nice. i mean up to certain extent good little at a time oh. as they say little at a time very yeah. nice yeah so i'm i'm really grateful to krishna yeah. i'm really grateful to guru maharaj i think i'm really grateful to him yes. that after coming after his uh, entrance in my uh, life the life is like upside down change <laughs> perfect wonderful and naturally your son will can you know and because he knows that you have chandramali swami so to your son that is like the ground of his life that's his basis so naturally they will grow like that once they because whenever they see a guru like even for my daughters he was my guru you know like they connected with him just like a grandfather it was just amazing and then later on they found their own spiritual master rithadvaj swami and they just got initiated i think with uh, in in the summer in july so they just found the spiritual master and then they got initiated by his holiness rithadvaj swami and then because they saw us like that you know so your son will definitely go in that same path and you're going to be so happy Rebel, congratulations to your girls thank you yes both of them were, were sparring for rithadvaj swami if actually is interestingly is my first daughter knew him when she was 9 months old baby then she, after 21 years she reconnected and they both took initiation from him in fact chandramali swami was at the initiation in july Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes, Chandramali Swami was at present for both my daughters with Dias Purusha Master in front of my Guru Dev Samadhi in Gita Nagri for the initiation wow. in July. So it, it was nice. Very special. Very because and thing is because I think uh, Chandramali Swami knew my both my girls uh, ever since they were babies. <laughs> they were diapers. He's seen my first one since the day she was born. She's she's 25 almost now so there's this connection with chandramali swami with both my girls too for so many years so yeah so your son is on the right path namrata right path math ji um i just want to tell that uh, namrata math ji is a, such a, a nice devotee and uh, um, yeah we have seen um, her son she, he is very brilliant and uh, very krishna conscious and always follows uh, his mom and wow. madhuri does a nice service uh, to guru maharaj like uh, she uh, she is an artist and uh, she she drew sketches she draws and uh, and also she does instagram service and she uh, keeps nice posts of guru maharaj in the wow instagram and uh, she well, manages well that uh, service so she is very talented madhuri <laughs> thank you for sharing that secret shrimati thank you for letting out the secret Yes, it's nice yes. to so it's nice to to hear a uh, devotee's hidden Guru talents. Guru Maharaj appreciates her work very much, Mataji. Um, wow. So what else do you need, Namrata? Yeah. You have the blessing of a spiritual master. Yes. <laughs> That's too much. I think uh, Shrimati Mataji appreciates no, no, no. it very much more than I am. No, I no, Mataji. You have to. One second, Mataji. Sorry. that is such a beautiful and you're an artist wow you have the mercy of a spiritual master what more do you need i am just trying i'm just trying to be an instrument <laughs> very nice that that is the whole idea of devotional service as we be the instrument and let the lord take over and let him run our lives and that is pleasing to both our spiritual master and shri prapa then it will be all good everything will be just fine Yes. How to do that? A lot, of, a lot of inspirations comes from the God family as well. So I'm, yes. I'm deeply, I'm deeply indebted to them. So wonderful. Thank you very much. And when I actually joined before two years, I think I wasn't even asking questions. Salad Mata is asking quite many questions after uh, after she joins. So I'm, I'm really appreciating her for that. She is yes. asking. i couldn't even ask at that time i like <laughs> seven months i'm just watching people uh, listening and just watching what what is going on right. <laughs> then slowly i took up and then it it uh, it just uh, i think vaishnava's mercy clearly vaishnava mercy Beautiful. guru and very clear. very nice 
Very nice. It's so nice that we ask questions. Yeah, it's very, and I really appreciate Mother Scarlett asking questions because it's so important to ask questions and get clarification, as your prophet said. That that's one of the, the six uh, loving exchanges is to inquire submissively. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask, and if we don't ask, then it's not clear in our minds. Then how do we go next next step? You know. So yes, very very nice. Thank you so much, Namrata. Now that I know more about your secrets, I'm very, very honored to have known you more on this call. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to learn a lot more from you. Thank oh, you. Oh, please. I'm just a servant of the Lord. Chandamaya Swami is just very kind to me. He's very merciful to me, and that's why he's always engaging me in service. But he's, he, he just, I, I just need his mercy and blessings. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I Mother Scarlett, you, you have a, a question, Mother? Yes. yes. Uh, my children are now old. One of them, uh, so, uh, the youngest is 25 and the mm -hmm. oldest is 40. Uh, I heard you to say that uh, even to, to take care of the children and to family, uh, fa uh, mother, father. I don't have my father and mother, but I have my children. And you say it's even when when you do something for them is even that is a devotional service. Yes. Have I understood it right? Yes. Even the children. Yes. Even yes. The reason being is that the children were given to us by Krishna. Okay. And every child, every human being, every living entity has the Paramatma in them. They have Krishna in their hearts. They may not be aware of it but they are dormant. So we cannot ignore them like a plant, right? If we were to plant a seed in the soil, we have to keep taking care of the plant. We got to make sure there's no weeds around it. We got to make sure there are no pebbles around it and we give it so much love. Then it starts budding. Then it grows into a little plant. Then it grows into a bigger plant. We can ignore it, right? If we ignore it for one, two days, the plant is going to wither. I know my mother, she's very good at that. My mother would talk to the plants. My mom was a plant fanatic. She had so many plants on her balcony. And I remember one time when um, she was, uh, she, and when she would travel when, uh, back to my home country um, and she would tell my father, you know, I'm going for two weeks, take care of my plants. My, mother, my father was like me, not a plant person. So he would water the plants every two, three days and the plants would be like so much water. Then he'll call my sister. I think the plants are dying. Please come do something before your mom comes back. You know, <laughs> so, <he> was, <laughs> so my son said, "Daddy, you did not talk to the plant. You must talk to the, what do I talk to the plant about?" <laughs> but the things my mother would do that, you know. So then my sister would come have, because she has uh, the green thumb. So she would come to my mom's house and okay, let me fix the plant before mommy comes back from, from you know. So <laughs> that's that is how it is with children. So mm -hmm. when the plant comes back. The plant would look a little bit droopy, and my mom would say, you did not water the plant. He says, I did. No, you did not give them the tender loving care, TLC. So when she spends a week, the plants again perk up. Same thing with children. If we ignore it for a little bit, they will come become dry. So when we come back into their lives, they perk up, you know? So even taking care of children as devotional service, just like Mother Yashoda, she took care of Krishna. She never, even though she knew that he was a supreme personality of Godhead, but Krishna still removed that from her mind. Why? Because he didn't want his mother to worship him like God because he wanted her to reciprocate with him like a mother would with a child because he wants all that love and the spanking and the shouting and the chastising. He wants to be scared of her stick. So he removed that thought in her mind for her to think, oh, but you're God. He goes, no, I want to be your child. So mm. even the Lord allowed that. And she reciprocated and he reciprocated with her. So in the same way with children, they are given to us because we brought them into this world. So it is our duty as parents to guide our children in such a way where they lead on the right path. And hopefully, if in this, if not next or whatever lifetime, they will get liberated. But we have a service. R bringing children, raising them in the right way is service. It is devotional service. Because no. even when we give them prasadam, 
they may not know that's devotional service. Making sure that they are being clothed, proper clothing is devotional service because why? They, are, they have Krishna in their hearts. They may not be aware of it, but that doesn't mean that we have to ignore just because the children don't know mm. or the person may not know that there is Krishna in their hearts, but we know because of, of the knowledge. So we still have to respect and serve them. Take care of them. Make sure they are clothed. Make sure they are being fed because they are given to us by the Lord, just as how we get a gift from a friend. But when, when they invite you to them, what happened then? Because it's not me who uh, making cooking the food because they invite me to them. And I, I, try, to, uh, I, I try to say, you know, I, I, I will see, I will see, I try to not to do it and say I'm busy. Mm -hmm. It's true because I'm studying and I'm uh, ch uh, chanting. So it's true. I am busy, but uh, they want me to go to them. Go they to them. Me to them. Yes, go to them. Because that's one thing that I've learned in the old um, I know of, uh, of a devotee who had children uh, before she became a devotee. And when she became a devotee, she was so much involved in devotional service that she had her mother take care of the children. She hardly saw her children. Over the years, there was a disconnect between her and her children. Yes. When the children were like 30, 40 years old, she had to rebuild the, 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 the connection with her children. And it took so much work, so much so that she had to go for counseling. The children had to learn about why did mommy leave me when I needed her the most? Okay. Why did mommy, why was mommy so engaged in devotional service, but she didn't think about me? Why did mommy spend so much time chanting, but she didn't think about me? Am I not important to her? So she had to go to devotion, to counseling to connect with her children who at the time was already a, well for the time had her kids and she was a grandmother so not only did she have to connect with her children even with her grandchildren whom she never wow. saw so then she had to learn that yes so she did say sorry to her kids she apologized mm -hmm. not that she she didn't apologize because she was in service no she apologized that she did not know how to do both devotional service and give attention to her children because her mm. children knew her mother's mother more than their own mother wow. so even when you yes it was it was very i mean she went through a lot and i've seen it with many many devotees who joined christian consciousness who've had grown kids when they come to devotional service they just forget the kids they gotta have the balance more because even when your kids come this is what you can do when, they, when your children come invite you, go over and bring prasadam with you. Mm -hmm. Also, my, my spiritual master always told me that whenever our material children or family call us, go and do some service, give them prasadam, because when they are associating with devotees, they get some pious credits. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the time. I know my, my mother, my, my, my mother used to work as a nanny and she passed away five, seven years ago. My, my mom used to work as a full-time nanny and she for a very wealthy family. So she used to get a lot, I mean, a lot of brand name clothes for my children. And at the time, you know, we were literally very poor. We couldn't even afford brand name clothes, just simple, simple clothes. So my mother would give so much clothes and I used to tell my and I used to complain, Mama, I said, mom, why are you giving me? I don't have space for these clothes. It's not for use for my granddaughter. I said, mom, I know, but I don't have space. So I used to get very upset. And I used to tell my spiritual master. And he tells me, Anasuya, do not stop your mother from serving your granddaughter, from your daughters. Because by your parents serving your daughters, they are getting pious credits. Because they are serving devotees. So let them serve. Let them spend. Because they are getting mercy by serving devotees. Mm -hmm. So yes, continue to do that. Absolutely. So since I then... Have, I have given them already Bhagavad Gita. Nice. And, uh, 
Perfect question, perfect answer, because I th I, I believe this is very good combination. Yes, it is, so it is. They, they yes. have got uh, uh, their uh, Bhagavad Gita. Nice. And what you mm. can do is, you know, cook your any of your favorite dish of your children. Give it to them as prasadam. Mommy made me something. It's my favorite, but only you know it's prasadam. That's yes. a way to get into their hearts, okay. you know? Or, or mm. if you buy any gifts for them, offer to the Lord, say, you know, Krishna, I bought this shirt for my son. I'm offering it to you and I'm going to give it to my son. So you know that you've offered to the Lord, but you're giving it as a gift to your son. It's another way of mercy. Unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> I'm just throwing some ideas out, you know. Yeah, I understand, but yeah. I don't have money to do that. It's the, fine. But thank you for me. They, they help me. So you, me. you see, let them serve you. Hmm. By them serving you, they are also getting mercy because they are serving a devotee of the Lord. Okay. So it's okay. very important to keep that open service channel. Very important. Even okay. my dad till today, you know, he doesn't have much money, but somehow when he sees my daughters, He'll give them $50. And I said, Daddy, you don't have money. He said, no, it's my grand. I said, fine, whatever. But it's service. Mm. Because they are serving a devotee. So yes, 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 mm. yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to serve all of you. I know I went way above time. So sorry, Srimati, that it went over time. And I thank uh, you No all problem, for... Mataji. Um, <laughs> it was nice discussion among uh, y'all. Yeah, Sorry, very, I got very, cut yeah. in the middle. Um, yeah, Namrata Mataji, I get a little bit of chance to appreciate you and uh, your services. Uh, please don't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> it is very nice to glorify devotees. And it's very nice to actually, uh, it's very nice to appreciate devotees and to recognize the service that they do. And, as, and because that builds a two-way reciprocation. Very important. So thank you for setting that, Srimati. Thank you for setting that pace and that mood. Yeah, and I'm very still nice. behind, Mataji. I'm learning still um, because I'm, um, I'm learning still from all of you. Um, yeah. Thank you so <laughs> I, much. I sometimes forget to glorify and sometimes I forget to appreciate. Uh, I just uh, take their services. <laughs> <laughs> but I forget I'm, I'm like that too I'm... <laughs> thank you so I much for allowing me thank you so much for allowing thank me you, to Mataji. serve all of you yeah, thank yeah, you and thank I you. hope I, I apologize for the last minute um, class unprepared completely no Mataji that was very nice class uh, you enlighten us with so many such practical tips and uh, practical yeah. points and especially parenting that's very important <laughs> thank you so much and and you can end the How class. How much ever we talk, we can talk whole day about I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> that will never end. This topic will never that end is, among ladies, especially. That is the power of, you know, that is the power of Sadhu Sangha, you know, how to learn, how to grow, how to improve, how to serve, how to do better, how to please a spiritual master. It never ends. It yes. never ends. Yes. Thank you so much. Vanchokravtivyascha. <laughs> Kripas in the Vaivacha. Patita Nampavanebya. Vaishnavebya Namo Namaha Shila Prabhupada. Ki. Thank you. Hari Hari Bal. Thank you. Hari Bal.